how does AI governance help prevent bias and ensure fairness in AI systems? Yeah, so bias and fairness, bias and fairness, sorry, is a uh, kind of a topic close to my home because I think a lot of people get it wrong. Um, and you can probably find a lot of people that want to sell you unbiased models and fair data or whatever else. And I would definitely be a little bit skeptical of those folks. Um, nothing is unbiased and nothing is fair when it comes to data, at least that comes from the real world. When we think statistically about data, we think about data generating processes. So the sorts of AI we're talking about today, the data generating process is the real world. It's people, it's society. And you know, like it or not, we do not live in a just society. There's you know, unfairness everywhere. And so the data that's generated by that process is also going to be unfair. And there is nothing you can do about that. To give a simple example, think about medical data. We can say that the data generating process is biased. Let's say we want to investigate the invest the uh, effectiveness of certain treatments for different people or whatever, I don't know. So there's going to be inequities in access to these treatments and certain sorts of people, usually poor people, are going to have less access to the treatments and so are going to cont contribute less to the data. And so that's one sort of bias. Then we can talk about the uh, kind of data collection process. And maybe certain clinics have good computer systems and networks so we can get their data and others don't. And so we're going to end up having bias where we're collecting data mostly from clinics in richer areas or whatever that have better access to you know, the network equipment. Then we can talk about data curation and let's say the researchers are speaking English and they have trouble dealing with other languages so when they're curating data they're going to say maybe to make our lives easier we're only going to use the English data and so there's more bias. And then the model itself can increase the bias as well. So no matter what you do you're going to have bias in your data and I'll return to my point before about how AI governance is about risk assessment and risk mitigation. So we understand that our, our data and our models are biased what are we going to do about it to ensure that we don't create harm in the real world? And if you'll forgive me one more brief anecdote, uh, there's a great story from uh, um, DALI from OpenAI, if you're familiar with it. It's an AI model that allows you to generate images from prompts. So you can say, show me pictures of cats dancing, and they'll make pictures of cats dancing or whatever. But they had problems with bias in the early days. And if you asked for pictures of lawyers, it would give you eight pictures of white guys. And if you asked for pictures of flight attendants, it would give you eight pictures of Asian women for whatever reason. Uh, so clearly there's a problem here. And what happened was OpenAI put out a, a blog post, like super brief, like one page on the screen saying, hey, we had this problem, we fixed it, don't worry, all good now. And it was true. If you ask for pictures of lawyers, some of them would be women, some of them would be different ethnicities, whatever else. But they said nothing about how they fixed the problem. And this is the really fascinating part. So somebody in the community, uh, some anonymous soul, came up with a great hypothesis and a way to test it. And what they did was they asked Dali to generate pictures of a person holding a sign saying. And that was all they asked for. What they got was pictures of people holding signs. And some of those signs said women. And some of those signs said black. And some of those signs said whatever else. And so what they realized was that all OpenAI was doing was saying, hey, if this is a prompt that has something to do with showing people where bias might be an issue, just randomly append the name of some, some underrepresented group to the end of the prompt. And like the community just ripped into OpenAI about this. It was really funny, actually. A lot of you know good witticisms on Twitter, as it was called back in the day. Um, and uh, yeah, so OpenAI, you know, didn't really respond to that anyway. But the point is that I'm actually not as hard on OpenAI as the rest of the community in this case, because I think what they did was at least pointing in the right direction. The point is that I don't think you can tell me if you have eight pictures of lawyers, how many of them should be women, how many of them should be men, how many of them should be, you know, white or black or whatever else. You know, there's no right answer to that question. Should it represent, you know, the human population or the population of lawyers, or should there be, you know, more women to counteract past injustices or you know you can debate this stuff forever there's no easy answer there and there's no such thing as an unbiased model in this case so what OpenAI did was they did a risk assessment they saw hey we're showing very non-representational pictures here this could end up in some campus brochure and people are going to think like hey only white guys can be lawyers or whatever this is like a harm that we see a risk of so what can we do to mitigate this risk and they came up with a, a very simple solution to that so I'm not saying that what OpenAI did was like the final perfect answer but I would say that they were kind of following the right blueprint in the sense of AI governance and that you know this kind of work is continuing and of course Google got into a lot of trouble over that kind of thing later there's still a lot of work and refinements to happen but it shows the right kind of thinking and how you actually deal with bias.